Welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel. My name is Emil Franchi. Welcome to Extra Time. It was Newcastle's penultimate home game of the season against Tottenham Hotspur. However, we fell 3-1. Uh, many might say that it wasn't a, a fair reflection of Newcastle's performance. There was certainly a, a slight reaction there, but we'll get into the, the details of it all. Um, I'm joined once again today by uh, the, the fan cam regular, Daryl Mitchell Hill there. Hello. Who, who's on that strip behind you? Uh, it's it's not Cher, don't worry. It's, oh. uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it says Dasmo. Oh, Dasmo. Yeah. Do you want me to refer to you as that tonight? <laughs> if you want, I don't mind. <laughs> uh, someone's alarm's going off, Kristen. Is that because we're about to come to you? <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. Um, Kristen, how are you doing, mate? He's joining us again. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. How are you? I know. Not too bad. Uh, seven days since we last spoke and not much has changed. Um, so um, maybe maybe it was your appearance on Extra Time that uh, caused this uh, the rot to set in at Newcastle United. <laughs> Who knows? Not the first um, time I've been accused of that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, lastly, we're joined by Jess. Uh, who, Jess, you take our Twitter legend slot tonight. You're like, it's like the oh. Glastonbury legend <laughs> slot. You take the Twitter legend <laughs> slot tonight. So Amazing. You've got that crown this evening. Um, we're all here to talk about another Newcastle United loss. Um, it, it was nice doing these videos when when we got in, in, in a project restart, I must say. But it's um, it's becoming a real chore right now, sitting uh, set aside time to uh, talk about Newcastle losing. Um, well, well, we'll start before the game. Always like to go back to then, cast any uh, memories of the game outside of your mind for a moment. Um, there's a lot of talk today about the Mourinho curse Ooh. <sighs> at Newcastle. Um, Kristen, what, what is it about Mourinho coming to St James's bar that one game in the cup where he's won, which technically means that the narrative is re redundant? Yeah, no, absolutely facts and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think there's anything too superstitious or supernatural about it. I just think the teams that have come up here have been teams that have tried to lead games, and so that's kind of played into. Newcastle as they've been for the last five, six years, which is a better team on, on the counter and when they don't have to be proactive in games. So I don't think there's anything too uh, hoodoo-y about it. I just think it's a situation of, of circumstances. Mm. Yeah, um, I mean, there's all the mythology of uh, Mr. Robson's home, which is uh, gets everyone a bit teary-eyed, I must say. It's, it's, it's nice that Mourinho treats St. James's Park with the respect that it deserves. Um, not so much tonight, never mind. But um, Tottenham's form going into this game... Um, Jess, what, what do you make of Tottenham uh, this season? Do you think do you think Mourinho was going to turn it around for them when he came in? Did you feel confident? We we watched the Tottenham game last last season and, and saw them under Pochettino, um, but do you, do you think there's been like a real upturn for them? Um, no, not really. I um, I <laughs> I, uh, I watched them against Arsenal. Uh, last at the weekend was that at the weekend? Yes, yeah, Sunday I think. That Sunday, was. yeah. Um, all right nothing nothing special but then again I don't think there's been I don't think there's that there's the quality in the league hasn't really been there this season I wouldn't say so they're not really up against much so yeah bit of a let off for, yeah. uh, for Tottenham yeah, actually, yeah. since they've come back but um then again we, we, we thought they were going to maybe get a summer they were going to maybe get some time to rebuild from this this team that was going out of fashion with Mauricio Pochettino, uh, soon to be our new manager, of course. Um, but, but speaking of managers, Daryl Mitchell Hill, uh, let, let's focus on our own. I'll have to take a bite of this pizza coming out. Mm. I'm hungry. I'm hungry for Bruce comments. Um, he talked today about where we are. What, what were your views on, on that? Well, he's right, isn't he? We are where we are. Um, I mean, you got to consider it, to, it is a bit of a step backwards from the vision that Rafa had for us. But, you know, Rafa's been and gone. So we've got to live with what we've got at the moment. And I think it's probably testament to the direction that the club goes under this current ownership that he's coming out with comments like that. And, you know, he's pleased to be what, a couple of points behind Southampton at this stage in the season. Um, I saw a video uh, earlier this afternoon on Twitter that... Um, Another uh, group had uh, posted it was a link to a video of Bobby Robson speaking pre-match right. for a game and, and, and talking about when we were sitting in fourth and how we could have achieved second that season. And it just shows how far we've come from where we once were. Um, again, I have nothing but credit for the job that Steve Bruce has done 
this season in you know basically keeping us up, uh, getting us to where we are now. But do I see him as the man to take us forward under a new owner? No. If the takeover for whatever reason doesn't happen, he's here to stay. Simple. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's fair enough. It's 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 facing those facts. I, I I do just want to spend a little bit of time on on this, guys, if you don't mind, before we go into the match. Um, Christina, I'll come to you just just from someone who's obviously followed uh, the the writing behind Newcastle and, and and can probably make some some decent comparisons. We saw a lot of it today, saying that it, it's very. Pardew esque the way that Bruce was talking. Do you think that's always going to be the case, bar Rafa Benitez, for any manager who's working with that regime? I think so, yeah, just because look at the list of candidates they've had Steve McLaren, Pardew, Bruce, I mean, Carver Kinea, was kind of thrown in there. <laughs> yeah, Joe Kinnear, <laughs> crikey. Um, Carver was kind of thrown in there just because he was around the situation, but it's that same sort of manager that to be brutally honest, I don't think he's getting a Premier League opportunity anytime soon. So there's a sense of appreciation on their end of where they are. Maybe a little bit of wanting to toe the party line a bit as well with the club's owners. And I think it just doesn't ever translate well to supporters. And the thing is, as much as we can talk about what Newcastle are and what we want them to be, I can't think of many football clubs where that kind of discussion would tow well. The idea that, oh, we're only a few points behind a team in mid-table, that that to me is a kind of stifling of ambition that I don't really associate with football at all. It, the idea of football is you're supposed to dream a bit and supposed to aspire to something greater than what you started with. And that's kind of my concern with Bruce is that I don't see it getting any better than where it is now, which there's only one way to go from there. And that's further down the table, which I don't really like the thought of. Yeah. Um, it, 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 I, I've, had a, I've had a real time with it today, just, just reading various views. And I, I think I can... I can understand the frustration, but but these constant harking backs to to uh, Benitez and and even Robson there, as as you mentioned, Daryl, I think that it's it's silly to talk about managers who knew what to do with Newcastle United. Benitez spoke up; he didn't stay because he knew that he couldn't change anything with that. But um, uh, just will we dream again? Do you reckon one day? <laughs> I'd I'd like to think so. But I think I think it's all gonna it's all hanging on the takeover. If the takeover yeah. goes through, fair enough. If not, I think the only way is down. To be honest with you, we see, we we just seem to be too happy coasting, mm. and that that's not good enough. So. It's a bit of a bit of a sleepwalk. I think that's one of the yeah. terms that people have been using. It's like the the calm before the storm. It's it it's just. Bleh. Can I can I say one thing? I yeah, feel like yeah, it's slowly on, emerging is it is a slight boom and bust cycle. So if we go back to like 2009 when we went down the first time, came back up, started really well, slow turn, eventually slipped back down out of the division. I feel like we're on a similar path now, if I'm honest. I feel like it's again, it's going to creep back and back. And and there was a phrase, I think it was George Colkin used it because George is wonderfully poetic like that, but sleepwalking into relegation. That's what it feels like to me. It might sound a little bit dramatic to say that at this point because we're safe and we're in mid-table. But I just think a bad season next season and we could easily be where Norwich or, or potentially Bournemouth are right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's worrying. It's, um, I mean, we keep going back to the argument of at least we saved, which at least made this one slightly more bearable given, given the performance. But we'll, We'll go into the game now, shall we? Let's uh, so yeah. brace, brace ourselves and just... Uh... Get in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, Daryl, what did you make of the lineup going into it? The the, the, the shape, did you think that this was a, a, a good setup given what we've seen in the last couple of games? Well, there was a lot of talk going into the game once the team was made known um, about whether or not the decision had got, he'd gone with was a back four or a back five. And, you know, watching him talk to BT beforehand, he really wasn't giving anything away as to how it was going to line up. And I think once we got into there, I'm, I'm pretty glad actually in the end that he went for a back five because I didn't fancy either of Yedlin or Kraft at left back as a part of the four. Um, Kraft is one of three centre-backs. You wouldn't do it ideally, but in the circumstances, there's nothing else we can do. Um, as far as the rest of the lineup goes, quite happy with how it how it started. I was quite happy to see Gale stay in there because he's been in, like reasonable goal scoring form recently. Um, happy to see Richie in there, and obviously Saint and Miggy pretty much pick themselves at the minute. Uh, inclusion of John Joe Shelby, yep, yeah, happy with that. 
Bentaleb, yes, I was to begin with, but then as the game went on, you just thought, why? We're going to... Oh, that's a dramatic pause. And Dar- you <laughs> I was like, I went, well, Daryl, Daryl's, Daryl's camera there just went bent and no thanks. Um, Daryl, are you there? He's dead. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get him back at one point. That is, that is one of my favourite things. Um, I think Kristen will just, just quickly run over. Hello. Um, oh, hello, Daryl. <laughs> ben, Bentaleb struck you down there. Still not there. Kristen, t- can you talk to us a little it's bit about the... Uh, connection. Just, it's all right, you're back. Just just leave it there for now. Bentaleb was where we ended, but Kristen... Back. J- we, we started all right, didn't we? Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I would say so. There was a lot of energy and a lot of industry, which is, I think, how most of the games have started for, for Newcastle of late. And if you were to look at the stats afterwards, you would say a smash and grab. The XG, I think, is is very close more shots on t- more shots on target, just total shots obliterated them. But I think that's the concern. As you look at total shots, 22, shots on target, six, compared to eight for Tottenham and five on target. They were just a lot more clinical. They just had a lot more quality and, and I think ideas, really, when it came to actually getting on the ball and, and leading the game a bit. Yeah. Um, Sam Maximan was looking good there. Daryl, did you want to finish off what you were saying um, with, with, the, with the lineup? I, I know that we kind of cut off at Bentaleb, but... Um... In terms of players that were back in the team, Sam um, Maximan looked like he was running riot for a bit. We were, were you going to mention yeah. him. I'm like, I'm like predictive text for your camera here. <laughs> well, what I said was that um, the selection of Miggy and ben, uh, Miggy and Almiron, uh, Miggy Almiron and Sam Maximan guaranteed to pick themselves at the minute. The Ben Lev one, I was happy to see him in the lineup, but as the game went on, it was just a case of well, why is he being picked? Hasn't got the legs to a Premier League midfield. And I'd be surprised if he stays beyond the end of the season. Right. Well, uh, yeah, Kristen, check the estate agency. Won't be keeping that house, as we've said already. <laughs> um, Jess, um, I know you're raging about the goal. So um, tell us what went wrong as uh, Spurs, <laughs> yeah. went, Spurs went ahead. We had a, we had a, we had a, we had a drinks break and, and then um, something happened. Fabian Shaw, man. Fabian Shaw. <laughs> just, he's like, I've used this word about him so many times, but he's just so nonchalant. Like, he just... I've been more enthusiastic about going to the dentist than what he seems to be <laughs> on the pitch. Like he just, he just doesn't look like he wants to be there. So, I mean, I, I get we're we're struggling for options, but personally, I wouldn't be starting him. So, and he he was just he he just he gave up. He gave up straight away. Then Yedlin didn't even try. And then Debravka shouldn't be getting beat at his near post. So yeah, comedy of errors. It was just a disaster. Yeah. yeah. Um. We, we had a bit of a heated debate about about Fabian Shea. Um. We might as well just get on to it now. Daryl, what 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 was your view on on what happened? Oh no, I think he's frozen again. Kristen. Um, <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> no, no, no. Let, Are you let all right? me uh, restart. And come. You're gonna come back in. I don't know what's going on with the Wi-Fi here. <laughs> it's not normally as bad. It's all right. Uh, well, basically, in the WhatsApp, just to summarise, D- Daryl kind of went down the route of saying that, that Cher has been bruised, if you like. Um, but, Kristen, you, you said that the, the, the blame almost lies in a number of places with, with, with uh, the, a player like Cher. Yeah, I've often thought that responsibility, we look at it like a ball that somebody holds. I don't think it quite works like that. I think that, yeah, Fabian Cher has a, a lot to answer for. I think his attitude hasn't been great I think he has been too nonchalant absolutely but I also look at last season he, he comes to the club I think after being relegated with Deportivo was in need of a bit of a reboot and he plays in a back three that suits him allows him to be on the ball allows him to be a creative force which again sounds like a mad thing to say of a centre back but makes the most of the skills that he's got then this season he's clearly not as important a, a part of the team I don't think based just off what we've, we've heard about Bruce's training methods He's as involved with the players on an individual basis as Rafa Benitez was. I always think of that Isaac Hayden story with the chocolates in the hotel and and that kind of thing. And I just think that sharp contrast has probably left Fabian Shaw feeling quite isolated. And like, what am I even doing here sort of thing. And so I can understand why he's become the way he has. That's not to justify it, 
But I think it's a breakdown in a relationship between a player and a manager, which, again, that's me speculating, but I think it goes to explain some, to some degree at least, why we're seeing the performances we are, which, to be frank, just aren't acceptable. It, it's a real pain in the backside, certainly for super fans like myself and Jess, or ex super fans, you might say, uh, for Mr. Share. But, um, D- Daryl, are, are you with us? I think so. How's that? All right, okay. Let, let's just get a, let's get a, quick, get a quick response from him. We, we said that Dubravka got beaten at his near post there, but we, we saw a very quick reply from him with some acrobatic saves. Do you, do you still think that Dubravka um, is the right man? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, I think, um, you know, he does get a lot of criticism now and again, but I think he definitely, you know, he's definitely the guy that we need in between the sticks at the moment. I think there's... By all means, there's uh, some other deputies looking to come in. I mean, we've got Woodman out on loan, um, but it'll remain to see what happens in the next pre-season as to how things lie up for the next season. Um, I think Dubravka has done, you know, we saw how much of an impact he had when he first came into the team. He's won far more points for us than he has lost, so for me, he's still another one. Yeah, no, Daryl's voice is <laughs> it's like a, a, a dark has broken in now, but um, we're, we're getting oh, there. Dear. We're getting there. We're, we're pulling you back to the uh, the 21st century bit by bit. Um, you're coming through in bit form at the minute. Um, uh, Jess, did you think that the response was good after the goal from Newcastle? Uh, did you did you think that we we maybe had a chance of? Uh, <laughs> that, I, I can't. <laughs> that was my cat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like She's the, uh, raging as well. <laughs> it's like the parliamentary debates all over again. Um, yeah, did you, did you think that we, we looked all right with, with the response from uh, after the goal? Yeah, uh, yeah. So the when he brought Lazaro on, made instant impact. I thought like his his play in the lead up to the goal was absolutely brilliant. Obviously, brilliant strike from Richie. But then I mean, I mean go, I think going forward we look all right. Like I thought. Playing the playing Yedlin and Richie quite high, that seemed to work quite well. Um, but it's it's at the, it's the problem lies at the back. I think I think going yeah. forward, going forward we look good, but at the back there's serious serious issues. Yeah, and and in injuries now I think are really coming into play. Um, Kristen, did you did you predict that the, the injuries now were, were always going to be a problem at this late stage, two games to go? Did you did you see this being the the thing that might happen that a lot of people maybe didn't foresee? It'd be great to see, absolutely, wouldn't it? Um, it'll make me look really smart. Um, I, I I think look the concern is is that the squad management has been a little bit ropey. The, the subs. I think a, a, a bit of an afterthought for the most part. And the squad's not that deep either. That's that's the other problem I think they've got at the minute. And yeah, Tom Allen's on the bench, Jack Young's on the bench. I'd just be inclined to throw them in now. If if, if you know you're not going to earn a great yeah. deal, maybe a, a place difference in the Premier League, which is, is not a huge sum of money for, for a club in our position, I don't think. I, I'd just give them a chance. Say, same with Matty Longstaff. I, I don't understand yeah. why... He's a pariah on things. I don't, I don't see how leaving him out convinces him to stay. It's, it's a bit of an odd situation. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's like Stockholm Syndrome. You know, if, if, if we keep treating him like, treat him mean, keep him keen or something like that. <laughs> is, that is that the way with Matty Longstaff? <laughs> uh, Daryl has switched sides now, um, which, which is incredible. He's, he's also frozen, so I'm a bit worried. <laughs> but Daryl, can you hear me? I can't hear you, yes. All right, OK. <laughs> well, it looks, it's like a ventriloquist act here now, but it's frozen on the most wonderful screen of you now. This is certainly making my night. Um, what, do we, what, what do we think of uh, John Joe Shelby in, in, the, in the first half and the, the closing stages of the first half? Um, I thought he was generally all right. He played a couple of really good balls into the box um, for a lot of the time. I'm not still a Dalek, am I? I sound no, right. no, you now you just now you just like a a headshot. But carry on, carry on. <laughs> we'll get through this together. So there was a couple of times, but it was more in the <laughs> more in the second half where um, a lot of the Spurs lads were just going straight past him, and he's he was doing that typical John Joe Shelby thing where it was like the dad jog, and he was just getting beat for pace easily by everybody. Um, but again, he was there, he was playing the passes, his passability was there to be seen. A couple of good balls into the box. The one for when Gail hit the post was a superb cross. Um, but I don't know, he, he's, he had a good game generally, but there was a couple of bits about his backtracking that were starting to, you know, really just show that his fitness was starting to fail, I think. Yeah, yeah. But he, he well, he was, he was in there as captain today. 
uh, which which was obviously he's the, he's the deputy for the cells. I, I think that he he put in an all right performance for me. That there was there was some nice pieces of play there. It's just a shame that we we can't really find that that final moment. And um, T- Tottenham did look like a, a bit of a bastard to break down, if I'm honest. Um, we eventually did break them down um, in, in in the second half. Um, Jess, you touched on it briefly, but that that Richie goal came out of almost nowhere, didn't it? It was it was a real yeah. bolt from the blue. And Daryl's yeah. gone. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. We'll get, we'll, get him, we'll get him back. Jess, tell us tell us about the goal from Richie. Um, yeah, so like I said earlier with Lazaro, I thought, I didn't think I would ever say this about a Steve Bruce substitution, but it was like, it seemed inspired. Like, oh, he's, he's back. <laughs> yes, he's <laughs> Um, he's here. Yeah, I, he's there. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's. I think Daryl's just drinking pure oil, by the way. There's something from malfunctioning. Dasmo, Dasmo, on one. Side. She has got into the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jess. Please, please go on. Um, yeah. So I th- thought the play, the play in the lead up to the goal from Lazaro was brilliant. Like, mm. didn't give up. And then obviously the hit from Richie was just perfect. Yeah. Very um, good. Very Matt, good. Matt, Matt Ritchie's a, a great asset to have in there. Do you think we saw a bit of his importance today, or, or was that just like one moment in in, in a, a big bag of nothing, Kristen? That's that's the quandary I have with Matt Ritchie is that a lot of what he brings is intangible. It's shouting, it's energy, it's effort, it's character, yeah. it's things that when the team have gone down, they've not really had. And so, how do you transition away from those players? and maintain the level. I, th- I think he would struggle to, to settle in a reduced role. He's going to want to play, and I understand that. And equally, the wages he's on, you'd, you'd find it hard, I think, to justify giving him a year or two on the same money. So it's it's a real difficult situation because I think he's probably a player that Bruce likes quite a lot. But I, I don't know how he involves himself <clears throat> in open play that much either because mm. it, it feels a little bit like he's trapped in between two positions. He's, he's not got the pace or trickery of a a winger in my eyes but I don't think he looks that comfortable as a left back either because as soon as that ball goes in behind it's like he's got blinkers on he can't really see what's behind him and I think that's why he's given away a penalty or two this season Yeah well uh, speaking of uh, players being out of position uh, we, we really saw the uh, the bad side of, of Emil Kraft uh, with, the, with the quick reply from Spurs it, it was annoying that He's up against England's number one striker, but sadly, Harry Kane is always going to score uh, if that is handed to him. But what, where do you think the problem was in the build-up to that goal, Daryl? Do you think it was the the ball in, uh, the fact that we didn't stop Tottenham coming at us? What, what, what happened in that, that that moment after the after we scored, I guess? Um, I think it might have been the case that we might have just gone off that boil slightly, you know, having just scored a goal. But, you know, you could quite clearly see from how Dubravka was going about things, that he wasn't happy with the defending and leading up to that goal. And I think it was very clever of Harry Kane to to latch on to the weakest of the three centre-backs um, for a guy who's playing out of position and he's just absolutely overpowered him in the air and got the header down and put it in. Yeah. Um, shortly after that, Harry Kane added to a bit of misery for us with a um, slightly rough challenge, you might say. Jess, did you, did you think that he deserved more for that one? Or do you think it's just a... The thing about Tottenham players at Newcastle not getting um, anything. <laughs> I mean, Twitter Twitter went up when that went in. It's like t- typical Harry Kane. Um, yeah. But I mean, I mean, yeah, you 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 get the feeling that people like him don't get punished, don't get punished fairly. Which I is, I suppose it's a bit of a stupid thing to say, really. But when you see it happening so often, you do kind of think that that is the vibe that you get. But. Yeah, um, I mean it's 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 still impressive the the way that Kane is Kane is scoring, but we we have had those moments whether it was the the first home game uh, where Deli Ali and uh, Harry Kane were were involved after a, after a pretty good World Cup. I think my my allegiance to them quickly faded away. But yeah. it, it, it's it's annoying because um, I mean th- th- this for me is is one of those times when I would have loved a crowd to be there. You know that the crowd would have been just absolutely. Yeah. Given the ref pelters, Harry Kane pelters, and it might have meant nothing, but it might have stopped that that final goal happening. Yeah. We we might have even got that equaliser. Um, Kristen, did you see a- anything changing when um, our Lord and Saviour Joe Linton came on? <laughs> uh, not really. Unfortunately, I think he didn't really get much of the ball. I think I think 
a couple of the balls that flew into Gale, I thought he might have been able to use his strength a bit more just because he's got that bigger frame. But no, I think I think that's kind of the problem is that I'm still trying to understand what Newcastle's plan is from front to back. How are you trying to score goals? Um, they seem to come, even the goal today just came from seemingly nothing. And, and that's my curiosity is what is Bruce's plan in the long run? Because even St. Maximan and Almiron, at periods it was like they were together but they were getting in each other's way and so it's it's weird I'm not I'm not incredibly mad after today I'm more just disappointed because I'm yeah. just it feels like it's represented a lot of the concerns that we've had for quite a while so you can't really get angry about that you just think well what's the solution when's it going to present itself yeah it's it feels like for me we've had the three kinds of loss we've had a a, a loss where we've actually played all right and in a way we deserved more from it we've been absolutely pummeled by Man City where we didn't even turn up and we've had the Watford where it feels like we've had the point snatched away from us um after after an absolute meltdown um which which is which is terrible I guess but um, um Jess the, the, the final goal went in do you think yeah. that any I mean it was just a again it was like one one mistake after another but do you think I, that Lamella just was too good in that situation I think I think I counted three tackles which Kraft messed up in the lead up to the goal. Like not not to put the blame on him again, but I think I'm sure I counted three tackles in the build up where we just completely t- tried and failed. I guess and it's a shame. But like you say, if he's playing out of position, I feel for, like for the for the second goal, it was as if he didn't know who he was supposed to be marking, didn't know where he was, didn't know why he was there. And then in the third one, I mean. Bless him, he tried, but three <laughs> three times. I mean, the, the, there was a, there was a weird moment in that final goal where it just it, it, it hit off. Dubravka pulled off a fairly good save as well. Fernandez got bundled over by Kane, and and, and the goal went in, and and Kane hurt himself. Good, the bastard. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, it's um, I, I guess that the, the final goal it, it happened at the time, and we knew by then that the game the game was done. But um, yeah, d- disappointing. Daryl, do you think all round? Do you think that the fact we've lost three on the bounce now is is almost a, a, a clear representation of where we are at? I think so. I think the season's just petering out now, isn't it? It's like you know that the, I don't want to say that the players are on the beach because I don't think they are. I just think it's a case of there's... Fabian shares straight in Newcastle well. Airport with that broken arm tonight, man. He's off to Saint Lucia, man. He's off to with his with his missus to get some nice Instagram pictures. <laughs> Oh no, that, that's fired off Daryl again. <laughs> <laughs> the thought of a holiday. Uh, is his it. Wi-Fi linked to his heart rate? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned. <laughs> oh, I'm hoping he'll be back in time for us to um, to, to name a star man. But yeah, disappointing, says Daryl. Um, I'll, I'll need to hotwire him in a second. But um, um, Jess, have you got anyone who stood out today who you could say was was your your, your star man? Um, I think. Saint Saint Maximin, I guess. Yeah. Because every every time he gets the ball, he looks dangerous. Um. But then I, I also want to say Richie purely because that absolute thunder bastard was incredible. Thund- <laughs> well, we, we, yeah, Sam Maximin, someone's we've not actually touched on yet, but um, I, I think his his performance speaks for itself. Daryl, you okay there? Nope. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Uh, Kristen, who's your star man? Mine's Daryl, to be fair, for this performance. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the same yeah. thing. Um, I'm inclined to think St. Maximan. I just thought it was a bit of a ragged performance from him because he just, it wasn't a bad performance. It was just, you could see he was forcing stuff. And I don't think he's comfortable when he's doing that. I think it's much better when you can sort of drag other players away from him and get him in those isolated situations like against Bournemouth, where I think he ended Adam Smith's career, to be honest. I'm amazed he's still playing professional <laughs> football. It's, scandalous but yeah I think he was the, the best of the lot yeah it's um it, I, I think I, I noted down Shelby as a potential just just for the the, the balls I guess but um as Newcastle's performance went on I, I think that, that just for the, the the effort and the the, the trying to, to unlock Spurs I mean we, we saw some low balls heading towards their nets um I mean really really worrying sign at the end is that he pulled up with his hamstring once again um yeah. seems to be something against Tottenham um there he goes Daryl <laughs> <laughs> Daryl's Daryl's hamstring's gone on his computer. 
Um, Daryl, have you quickly just tell us who your star man is before you go again? Um, for today, or oh, um, Daleks back. <laughs> um, we haven't got time here. No, <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> um, put some money in. Matt Ritchie, I'll go with Matt Ritchie just for getting the. We're gonna go Matt Ritchie. Yeah, I think I think it's a it's a toss up toss up between Matt Ritchie and Sam Maximan in terms of the players that we're actually gonna gonna do anything. Um. But yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, we were just talking about the hamstring there. Do you think it's it's probably come at come at the right time for San Maximan, Daryl? Quite possibly. I mean, the, the lad, you know, we say the lad running around non-stop during games, so it, it's not a surprise to me that it was going to go eventually mm. after so many games in such a short space of time. It's just been it's been like one of those like that meme where it's like the what's it in the door lock and it's just getting, <laughs> getting ready, ready ready to go. Um, <laughs> Oh man, it's it, it's it's really disappointing. This, I mean, uh, Kristen, can you can you give any final words just for this performance as a whole? Because I'm I'm trying to do it myself, but it, it, you know how I say about we've gone through the the three types of loss. This loss, for some reason, hurts more than the other two in a way. Yeah. Because I think it feels more normal almost. It doesn't yeah. feel as if there was an egregious mistake or there was something that could be obviously rectified. It. it it feels like the club has sort of settled now, or the team has settled now, and this is what would be the norm over a, a longer season or next season, rather, when when things have got back to to some kind of normalcy. I think that's the problem. Is that, I mean, you talked about Shelby. It, to me, it felt like a very normal Shelby performance. There's a great moment, but there's lots of on his haunches, lots of jogging. Same with Emil Kraft. Like, I, I spoke to some recruitment people and they were quite surprised that Newcastle signed him because he was thoroughly average in France. He really wasn't anything special. But the fact he was a little bit taller and, and fairly cheap seemed like a good idea. And it's those kind of decisions that I feel like I've seen this club make before, often with pretty bad consequences. So I think maybe it's an element of deja vu and a bit of foreboding maybe hanging over things that I've, I've got it feeling that way. Yeah. It's so oh dear. I don't like that. I don't like the four <laughs> Tell you what. But there are Shout Disney out. movies and puppies in the world, Emil. So don't worry. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Yedlin's dog, of course. We've, we've still got Simba for, for, for the for the time that he's with us. Um, J- Jess, we've got two more games left. Do you, do you see us getting any points at all from Brighton or the champions, Liverpool? <laughs> um, uh, no, I don't. No, no nothing I at think, all. Uh, t- I mean, we do need. I think. It is easy to forget that they have been playing like, what is it, every three or four days or something for however many weeks now. They are yeah. going to be knackered. It is a, it is a big ask. Um, but I, th- I, I think coasting's the right word. Like, we're safe now. We've got however, God knows however many injuries. And it's just a case of like, let's just see the rest of the season out and crack on for next. Yeah, it's um, it, it's a bit of a, a sad ending to, to what it was a, a, a bright project restart. Uh, Daryl, we I can't remember. Did we had you one for the was it the Villa game or was it the uh, yeah the Villa game the right. Villa game. Obviously, at that point we we'd had a bit of a, a start. Then the, then the the cup game happened. But after that, safety was near enough confirmed. Are you satisfied with the fact that the the work was done in the in the first half of this? Um, I mean, in, in you got to look at the big picture, then yes. Of course, you don't want to be going into the, the the last few games of the season with the likes of a Watford or a West Ham, where you're looking over your shoulder constantly as to what the other two below you are doing. Um, so I'm I'm glad we got it sorted. It's the, the last few years, even under previous manager, um, it's been my thing is get ourselves mathematically safe, and then anything after that is a bonus, and that's actually quite a sad state of affairs, really. It is. Yeah. In, yeah. in the big picture, you know. Yeah. Um. Kristen, do you, do you think that I mean, how 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 do we respond against Brighton? It's it's just it's weighing on now for Newcastle. But I I always say that Newcastle are the, the most likely team to find something in amongst uh, the real misery. So uh, it's it's going to be a, a weird one at the weekend <laughs> or Monday. Yeah, sorry, it's, it's Monday when when we play them actually. It's funny. My dad's in his seventies and he says the same thing that Newcastle have this odd habit of when you least expect them to win, they'll do something spectacular and I think ideally what I would want from Brighton is what I wanted from Watford which was a performance where the big players come back in and I see that fight again and I see that energy just to to polish off the season because yeah they've stayed up and and that's great they've done well to do that but I think it goes back to that wider point which is 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 that all we're here for is that we're just here to sort of be in the Premier League bubble which is I, I don't really take much joy from that anymore I think that's 
maybe why we found a bit more happiness when we've been in the championship and, and near the top of things. Because at least then you, you feel like you've got an objective to work towards. I don't know what the club's objective is at the minute. That's, that's the troublesome aspect for me. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's baffling to me, but I, I, dare I say that I almost expected these final five games to go as badly as they have. We, we, we did a prediction podcast and we, we, we pinned it out. We said, right, Sheffield United is going to be an awful start, but then Villa, West Ham, uh, the relegation rivals like Watford and Brighton, you'd think you get the points. But I almost expected the job to be done in those in those first few games. So um, lost me there, Daryl. You're infecting my, my computer. I think I went <laughs> I went dark there for a second. I don't know what's going on. The virus is setting in. But uh, you know, I, 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 I'm just glad we're safe. And, and I've said this many times. Now I, I would like to end on 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 a better note here. Um, Eric Lamella's hair, Jess. Are you a fan of the shepherd's pie, or would um, you say it's more of a cottage pie? Uh, well, I'm vegetarian, so I wouldn't well, say it okay. was either. But <laughs> well, what, 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 what would you describe it was it as? A, a nice jack of potato? It's it, awful. Bloody awful. <laughs> Get it off. Get rid. It's horrible. Uh, Daryl, you look like a man who could maybe maybe get that hairstyle at one point. Uh, I mean, uh, if you were to have any food type on your head, what 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 would you be like? To, what would you like the comparison to be? Pineapple. Just a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just the stalk or the, or the full thing, like right up. Uh, not the stalk, but the spiky bits. Yeah, and and, uh, and 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 Christian is a uh, sorry, Chris Christian uh, as a, as a, a serious journalist. Um, yeah. What 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 what, have, what would your take be on on a, on a food on your head? That what would you go for? Uh, a Frey Bentos pie, just for the texture. Oh, <laughs> well, now hang on, cooked, cooked or not cooked? Uh, uncooked. Or would you, I'll let the sun or, do that. Or would you like to be opened over time and it'll just lift slowly? <laughs> yeah. A little bit of metal coming up there. Um, D- Daryl, give us a prediction for Brighton. I know, I know we've kind of talked about what the response might be, but let, let, what, what are we thinking? Um, two nil to Brighton, unfortunately. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. We'll go for that. Um, Jess, you're doing something amazing for charity. How do people sponsor you, and what are you doing? Tell us a bit about it. How are you um, feeling? Oh, well, well, I wasn't <laughs> expecting this. Um, so I've been doing 5K, walking or running 5K every day for 30 days. Today is day 24. So I finish it on, tu- I finish it on Tuesday. Um, if you go on my Twitter, which you'll see in the link to the video, um, the sponsor link is in my bio and it's my th- um, pinned tweet as well where I've been posting updates which I'm sure have been getting on everyone's nerves but oh like, no it's, uh, hey, proving that you're doing it isn't anything <laughs> I know yeah well that, that's what I was worried about so I was like I'm yeah. going to have to show everyone every day that I've done it but yeah uh, it's, been, it's... it's been hard but it's for the West End Food Bank in Newcastle yeah. I think raised about £1,300 so far so amazing amazing yeah. and um, and yeah good luck good luck till Tuesday you've got the Brighton game you've got the Brighton game the night before so get in uh, <laughs> woo <laughs> um yeah uh, well done um right well i i think i think that's all we can talk about guys thank you uh, very much and um uh you know just, just... <laughs> agreed <laughs> I don't we'll leave it there. <laughs> um thanks guys thanks for watching extra time thanks, be back for the final one against brighton Woo!